Hey everybody, good morning. So today, I'm um, gonna do the back sheet metal work and framing on the 67 Chevelle. And as you can see, I've already got one bar in and second bar in. Well, it's just tacked. It's it's not really in as per se. Just you know, and you know, tack. So next bar is going to be up and over this and over. So let's get to it. Ready, set, go. Yeah. getting to uh, making that bar that I was talking about the, the curvy one right here and so hey let's use the pipe bender no that doesn't work uh, let me show you what that does on a square pipe um, that makes kinked up bends like that didn't work so I thought well let's use uh, the big pipe bender which is a big triangle looking thing I don't have it here but anyhow and it's got a, a hydraulic ram that pushes up and then bends the pipe bends bends the pipe um, that did that then I thought well What's really happening in the pipe bender is the pipe was slipping some. So I put the piece of wood in there, really got her tightened down, and we got that kind of bend. So it was closer. And looking on the internet, looking for a square tube pipe bender dies, and I found some for the one inch. Uh, they're over $300. I just need one pipe. Yeah, I might use it later for something, but for now we're going to do it a different way. And just the example will be quickly, not on this piece, but another piece, obviously. I'm going to just lay out my cuts, and I'm just going to make cuts in it every quarter to three-eighths of an inch and I'll lay this out more exact and I'll do that with a cutoff wheel make some cuts in there that will allow me and I'll actually have to go higher than that that will allow me to bend this tube over the hump and the other way. So I'm gonna get to laying that out and I'll get right back. Okay, back, got it laid out. Went with quarter inch, seeming kind of close. So I spread it out a little bit, but uh, we're gonna go with that. This is gonna kind of be a test piece and uh, see how that looks.
Okay, let that cut. Like I said, it's a lot of welding if I don't have to. So let's see what the bigger cuts do. Put you right there. This gets me where I want to go. Yeah, we may have to do the smaller ones. You see, bending much easier than these. So, back to the drawing board. Do some more cutting. in a minute okay let's try that again really cut her up this time a lot of welding to do okay well, let's kind of just now that's that's almost perfect Gonna bend it a little farther. Thinking. It sits flat. Not quite flat yet. Well, look at that. That uh, that worked. It worked out all right. Now the gaps are pretty much closed. I gotta run a bunch of little welds on there, but uh, that's good to go. I'm gonna put a put a clamp on that for the time being. That's going to sit right there. Ish. You know, have you ever seen, and, and I've done this before actually, you've seen me do it on the frame rails in the back. Um, those little how-to, little quick video short things, they do some cool little inventions and cool little ideas. Well, that's kind of where this idea came from. Um, wish I would have put it up. Would have got a lot of hits on it, a lot of likes, maybe. But anyhow, so I need to measure, do my measurements from here to here, make sure where that is. But now, and I'm going to do this in three pieces because trying to do one piece get the length right and make it fit in here because of the curves and things shrink up some 
So I'm doing a bunch of welding already. So what's one, you know, two more places. So I'll get the length of this, get a rough idea. I'll overcut it so then I can trim it and make it fit. But we've got this little bend to do. And there's, there's bends in here too, but we'll see what we're going to do with that in a minute. So there it is. Nice little arc. See you in a minute. Got another piece made. We're going to. Work on getting this one welded up. Well, that's one side. Hello, righty. Well, that was fun. Let me get my light over here. So you got the idea of what it takes, but that's the finished product. And I've got multiple bends in there, uh, as well as, you know, that's, I mean, how are you going to make a bend like that on the brake where it kind of dips and comes back up? And same thing with that over there. So it kind of just contours to whatever you're doing. Now, once I got it to fit and then tacked everything in place, took and welded it up, well, of course, when you weld something, it tends to shrink up. So I had to come back, fit it while it shrunk up. I had to beat it. Not beat it, but put it on a flat surface and kind of flatten it out like that bend there. It, it went like this. So I had to flatten it back out, which then caused it to split in a couple little places. And you weld that back up and then you fit it again and then you hit it again and then, you know, so on and so forth until you get it back in there to fit. So it's in there. I'm double checking my measurements. I'm thinking about putting a plate right there. I'm not sure because all this does is it's is where the sheet metal is going to attach. It's not a structural thing. Um, so who knows? We'll see. See you in a bit. I'm back. So uh, we left off. Got the uh, Anyway, we got that tacked in right there and bent and tacked. So, got that. I re did this bar right here because I had it touching the frame rail, which it doesn't, does not get welded to it. So, I put a spacer underneath it, equal on both sides, uh, just to give me a little leeway when I lift the body, put the body back on, I put solid mounts on it. You know, you never know. So, also in my, in trying to figure out how to bend rod, uh, thinking that this bend here wouldn't be too much, and it, it is. It, uh, I can't get a good even bend, 
and it buckles. Uh, but original plan was to go from here to here and then here up there with sheet metal. Well, and just doing a mock up and looking at stuff, I put that bar on there like that to see what it looked like. And that doesn't look too bad. Kind of kind of an angle there. It just kind of comes up and follows, not really follows, but kind of follows that, which you won't see. Um, but totally eliminates this and solves another problem that I was having because I have a uh, the back glass mechanism attaches right here with a bolt right there and uh, if I were to do my original plan that would have like from here to up there would have covered that bolt up uh, this totally does not cover that bolt up and what I will be able to do is put these yeah. anyway put this pipe here like so uh, flush with this up and over and have three pieces one two three pieces of sheet metal that go this way Okay, and I might even make an indentation in this, kind of a seat or a nitrous bottle situation or something. But in doing that, I can remove this panel and still get to my windshield bolts because those are some more down there. So the panel would be here, bolted here, and to this rail that would be here, remove it, access to everything on the inside. So, I've run out of square tubing, and it's Saturday evening, so um, I've gone to up here, I'm going to make a template for this piece. I've measured in one, two, three, four places on each side to help establish this curve. I've marked it out on this piece of paper, one, two, three, four, this is the center. So my arch is going to look like this here, kind of, kind of like that so let's get to making an arch and we'll get that cut out and kind of see how that fits in the car so mark uh, i looked for something that was kind of round but even looked at the arch on my dash but the, it's too short is it? It's not too short. What am I saying? So I've got to pick out the dash is a little shorter than this. I've got to pick out the curve that matches my measurements. Well, second thought, I'm going to cut my measurements a little, a little big, and then I can kind of trim. So I'm going to do. Okay. 
because this just got too much of an arc. So I'm just going to wing it. And I'm going to give like an eighth of an inch. Yeah, that's good enough. I don't mind a little overlap because it's going underneath the flange. And I measure to the end of the edge of the flange. Probably cutting too much off. Probably could use more. But we shall see. That kind of looks like kind of. I'll cut it right to the edge of the bar that crosses. Yeah. We got some got some things to trim, but do this a little bit, put one end in, yeah we got, uh, we got a little overhang here and it's supposed to be flat, uh, I need to do some trimming in the side here, and I'm going to do all that and be back at you. Okay, well, Trim, trim, trim. We got her to fit as best we could. I want that flush right there, and it's giving me problems, and I don't know why. Anyhow, I guess you know this couldn't, this may not be perfectly straight because I've seen two pieces of paper together. But got the click, got it up there, got it trimmed, got it tucked. Got the Plecos installed. What I'll end up doing is just probably spot welding to that old piece of sheet metal that was there. And not sure what I'm doing that way yet, so we're gonna hold tight. This has a dip this way. Um, I'm gonna have to do something to uh, figure that out because if I spot weld it down then you see what happens is it pulls that up so we'll figure it out see you in a bit hey everybody I'm back uh, so I think I were I left you off because I can't figure out how to use this stupid camera you know the touch screen and I got big fat fingers and it doesn't work so I believe I left you off uh, just a little you know got this cute little bar in in which I did the, the cut the slots and all that and make that shape and and we went over some other stuff I'm going vertical not horizontal and anyhow instead of doing the cutting to make my angles and my curves because I've got four of those to do and that one on the bottom took me oh three hours so I bit the bullet 
I bought a die from a tube bender and we're gonna see how that works I did one test seemed to work okay I got a, a nice bend out of it it's about a 30 degree bend -ish. it's not all buckled and everything well it is down there but I don't care uh, didn't buckle up here because I, I beat these down but anyway it's nice curve so we're gonna do some pipe bending and this takes a little finagling uh, the pipe fits in uh, the tube pipe whatever you want to call it fits pretty tight into the die you got to kind of beat it in there with a rubber hammer and get it all lined up to fit but all right, let's just bend this thing. I don't need to talk for hours. Who cares? That's boring. So, I'm going to bend something. So once this zeroes out, as they call it, like when this gets tied up into there, dang it, I need to uh, file that edge. I thought I did. No, I did that one. Okay. Give me just a minute because this edge right here was sharp. It was cutting into this metal. So I'm going to uh, machine that a little bit, smooth it out some. I'll be right back. Okay, back. Uh, what I did was, this is like a scuff right pad on here. And I just smoothed these little edges off. So let's put that back in. Bend some. gonna be good that's like right in there already so that's pretty well zeroed out so put our little uh, dial indicator on zero need to watch for is it puts a lot of pressure yep it's already doing it dang it See, it's not letting it slide like it really needs to just slide see that big old burr it creates it's not sharp. I really shouldn't have done that. I'm going to have to clean that off real quick. So 
somebody told me I need to probably put some grease on it. Be right back. Move that. So you go a little bit fast. And let that go. I get to beat it with a hammer. That usually doesn't work either. I'm getting time bar. I'm gonna have to put gobs of grease on here. Yeah, that's uh, I think is my problem. <clears throat> so anyway, let's see how this fits. not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this to be basically vertical. Should have bent this at a 50, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Anyway, 
until that's almost 90 there and you can see where my pipe is so we got a little more bending to do so let's get to it I'll be right back okay so I got a bend and from what uh, my little dial indicator said it was 50 degrees let's check that and I got a big old burr right there let's try the camera this way so I got a big old burr but anyway I got a bend dial indicator said it was about 50 degrees and I'm gonna check it This handy dandy tool. No, the rod didn't come with it. I was just trying to find an angle. You know, roughly. Probably could have used something a little more sturdy, like this. But anyhow, so. Been having fun using these things. That's not it. Anyway, try to uh, figure this stuff out. It's the only way I can get the angle. It's like do that, put it at 90, then zero it, and I've got 38 degrees. 38 degrees. Now, my, remember my little dial indicator on my bender was, I bumped it, moved it, all that kind of crap. So we got 38 degrees. is fine. I've been trying for the last hour to figure out what this angle was. That's not it, apparently. I don't think that's 138. You gotta be a rocket scientist to figure out what this is. So that's 42. Which really should have been 38 or 40 or 40. But we're gonna play with this a little bit. So turn that off. We're gonna play with this angle. Uh, a smidge. Try to figure this out. That's what I don't know if you can see in here. Let me get a little. All right, let's try that. Set this bad boy up here. And yeah, this is supposed to be faster. It's interesting. So, obviously, I need to uh, cut some more off so I can go that way with it. That was down in front of this. So up there I thought, okay, well, that'll move me back an inch. I'll cut off an inch based on where it was touching which was the very bottom portion and I should have gone from the top 
because it was just a, a 90 degree cut at the end and that would have got me back an inch so basically what I've gotten is nowhere maybe half an inch so this is all you know trial and error until I figure out what the heck I'm doing and that'll be at the end and then I'll go oh I wish I should have done it this way Isn't that pretty up there so we're going to now that I need to go back an inch I'm going to measure back one inch again we're going to cut it let's see what our angle is here That's 89 point, well it's 90, right, at this very second. It'll change in a minute. So, if I, I'm gonna cut another inch off. We're just gonna sneak up on this thing. See, that angle is gonna change. When I cut that off, or is it? I'm still on the bottom of that. Now it's going to change because since that's moved in already, well, we're just going to cut some off and see where it goes. See, this first one's going to end up being the template for the rest of it. So let's get that done. Okay, boys and girls, here's, and this has been about three hours, so, you know, I guess it doesn't really make much difference. As far as making one of these, I have problems without, with, you know, figuring angles and blah, blah, and trying to get these cute little fancy tools that I can't figure out how to work. Anyhow, so 90 degrees here, now that fluctuates. Uh, I'm fitting flush up here best I can um, that's fitting good I want the sheet metal to run up to that I may bend the lip that way on top and then I'll I don't know I'm, I'm not sure yet I'm just I'm just working on this part but I do have to keep in mind I'm going to fit my sheet metal. Now I've made this one to fit here, but it's not going here. It's probably going to go here, one's going to go here, and then so on. So again, this is a, a good start, good template. Uh, this one's got to be about an inch longer, then obviously shorter. That'll be fun. Cutting that and cutting this little angle here. Make that fit. But I'll cheat a little bit. I'll slide it down and then make a little line. So there's that. Now let's go do three more. Hey, I'm back. So I got this piece bent and you're wondering why am I outside in the woods? Well, because I got that piece bent close i was half a degree off whatever which i thought was great and normally yeah i'd let that go but i'm trying to be very precise now so in order to get that little bit and and i've actually gotten a couple degrees out of this is 
put that in there. Let me let me get where I can. You can see. Put that in there. Find you a nice tree. And look, see how nice that fits right in there. And you can, you know, push on your bar. You can get half a degree, two degrees. Depends how you push and what the bar will let you do. I've been uh, bent my one and five eighths pipe, as we call it, I guess, um, from my roll cage. I've been bent it half a degree or two between that tree. And the nice thing about it is it doesn't leave any marks on your metal. It leaves a little tree bark, but let me show you how close we get it. So 37.4. Oh, just depends on how you hold your tongue as far as what measurement you get this time. I'm trying to hold it as flat as I can, bring it around. There's 37, well, it was three. Now it's changed to six. Now it's five. So, that's four, now it's one, now it's two. Love these fancy little tools. So it's 37, five. That's four, four, that's what we're going with. So, voila. Look at that. Boom. That is bent how we like it. So now I'm going to trace this little angle down here. Uh, I, had, I left it longer because remember I got to have that one piece longer or two pieces that are longer. So I'll trim this. This one will actually get trimmed as well but I need to put this back on here. So I'm gonna get this cut, get it inside. Ready, back again. So, yeah. That one's not in, it's just sitting there. Not, didn't want you to think I, I really did something. Anyhow, you see that fluctuating down there? That's because I'm sitting on the car, moving around. So anyway, close to 90 as I can get it. Also, you know, kind of depends if the car's level or not. But anyway, I got a tack up there, a tack right there. I lined it up the best I could with my frame rail. Uh, measured my gap and this is all just again eyeing it measuring it from there eyeing through I wanted roughly a quarter of an inch gap so you see the frame rail you see the bar going up and just kind of did that all the way up A pain in the ass. It has taken me all day. It was supposed to be quicker. But it probably would have taken me two days the other way around. But, you know, just trying to make things fit, keep my angles, keeping 90. See, oh, it's 90 now. So, anyhow, next thing I have to figure is this beauty right here um, you know and to figure out what that little angle on the back side up there was on that one that's what took me so long so then I just 
you know, cloned, cloned this one to this one, left it long, but now I gotta figure out, and I'll use a straight edge all the way across, where and how to make this level. So, with the other one. So if I was, say, level with that one, I gotta bring that one down, which I, I knew. I gotta cut about an inch off of it, roughly. Um, I may do that one next, which I can, I can still use. I can use this one anywhere. I can use it over there. But anyway, you'll see that when I do it. Need a bit. Alrighty, folks. Well, I'm back. It's a few days later, and uh, just wanted to show you. That's what happens when you have tools to work with. Pipe bender and little, uh, you know, forget what they call this. Angle finder and angle finder. There's fancy words, but they escape me at the moment. So now we're gonna take those and continue putting them in here so that's going to be another 17 days so we'll see you in a bit yeah something i wanted to show you and i found my angles and yeah these fancy little digital tools this thing's a nightmare right here so you think all right it's straight and you go a 90 and it says 275. Yeah, okay, well, let's just go the other way. Yeah, that should be the way it should go. Not a problem. But then, if you have it this way, just fold it up and you go on. You say, well, that should be... A... Okay, th this thing's making me stupid now. So, and always the way that I want to use it is not the correct way. So, yeah, this, okay, my example is, yeah, it shows the 90, but then it shows this is 128, which that's fine, I get it, I get it. I don't like reading 128. So what I do is I will take this little protractor type thingy and I will set this on a 90. Just makes it easier for me. And if somebody else has got a better idea, please tell me. So see it says says virtually a 90 right there, but it's not perfect. It's 90.8. So I'm going to hold that there, hold that there, squeeze her in. That's 90.1 now. We're gonna zero it, zero. Okay, now, we take this and this angle is thirty seven point eight thirty seven point nine changed but anyway so Anyway, I wanted the, the 37 degrees because 128 or whatever that number was does not compute on my little dial indicator here. I can only do, you know, this. 
which is 0 to 240. <clears throat> so that's how I did that. Uh, that's how I got it to work for me. And maybe that'll help somebody else out. Or like I said, please tell me in the comments because I fight with this stuff every day. See you in a minute. Okay, I'm back. I uh, took the one bar that I had already tacked in there out because I got the brilliant idea of why don't I just duplicate it and use it as a template. Although this angle here is going to be the opposite direction. This angle will be the same. So let's see how that works out. If I mark this. And I'm going to, again, find out what this angle is. I think it's 37 degrees. on how you measure it, I guess. Either 333 or 25.7. So to go the opposite direction, zero this in a different way so it's easier to hold Sometimes your brain just can't see something. Let's try it. Yeah, I was hoping that would. trying to get it this way. That one there, so I'm do it just the opposite. There's my line. That would be the high spot. But I can't I can't see now. You see?
forgotten what this angle was. Okay, 27. Remember that. 27. Because it's like 27.6. 28. Alright, we'll go 27. <laughs> <laughs> was difficult and I didn't even get it Yeah, it's, it's figuring out how to, this thing wants you to use it. Because I wanted to use this so I could, you know, you saw, I could lay it on there and, and hold it. And, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, see you an easier way. Leave it in the comments. Okay. I'm back and I want to show you a little something. Um, follow me here because I uh, I made this one this bar the right side which is over there where the light is okay and you can see the bar down on the bottom it's got a curve to it and, it and another curve right by the quarter panel window so anyway, the multiple angles. So we've got the angle up there at the top. So I made this one. And now I'm going to... I've already made my mark, but I just want to show you. So I put this on top of here, made that mark. Made that mark. 
and you know they might be a little a little long a little off I'll cut it just a little bit long anyway so then I've got room to to uh, trim nothing wrong with some trimming anyhow so mark that again I can't see for some reason anyhow so now instead of trying to find this little stupid angle right here I thought well it's got to be the opposite so I Flipped it like that. Okay, follow me. Made my mark because I had my starter mark, and that was this that was here. Marked it. Flipped it this way. Marked it again. And then on the other side, like so, just take your, take it this way, the long side, and connect the dots. Yeah, if I can get this thing to lay straight. Connect the dots. So, voila. And I'll square it up on the uh, good old bandersaw thingy. So I finished marking this out. I already did. So let's cut that off. And make that happen. See you in a bit. Take two. Hey, it's been 17 hours. And I've got some framing in. You can see up there, up there, up there, up there. Uh, ended up cutting into the side right there. And I'm going to actually cut it back even farther and then sheet metal it at a taper. And do it that way. So, yeah, that's the idea. Um, you can see it over there a little better because there's a light. Let's try this one this way. So, that's how that is. Uh, I did a little change up on where I was going to have my bar. I put it a little offset from the frame here thinking it was going to make something in here may do that may not do that anyway as i realized i was doing this and you know and i got these closer together a little more strength but kind of ran into some thought process of because I still want to close this area up <laughs> um, gonna have to rethink that and I'm gonna put some uh, bracing across I'll use this you know across and probably just in the center and be done with it and uh, here we are so far so see you in a bit hey we're back I gotta plug this thing in hold on okay so uh, you don't know what happens when I don't have the camera on 
Anyway, we got some new arrivals, this here, that here, and I think I told you already. But anyhow, uh, what I noticed, this bar right back here, got a little sag to it. Not because that's arched back there, this has a little sag. And I'm gonna show you. And I, I wondered about the one by one, if that was gonna be sufficient or not. And, well, be the judge of that. A little bit of a gap. So, we're going to attempt to fix it. Got hoses and cables and wires and fans. Move this out of the way. Um, this is a fun little. You gotta poke that back to there. Move this around. Down over there. Let that fall in there. Come back over here. Jam that. I don't need to take it back out. Come on. I just ground that off. Make room. Still gonna have to shorten, yep. Gonna have to shorten my bar a bit. Look over here, see what that says. Yep, something like that. And then you see, I don't want it to fit that way. I want it under there. So, I'm gonna pull it back out, cut it some more. Okay, I got it in there now. So, what I'm gonna do, put that back up there so I can't find it later. Uh, I attempted to see if it was straight the best that I could and still have clamps on it. Anyhow, uh, seems to be straight. So I'm gonna tack it in a couple spots over in here somewhere and uh, then we'll pull the clamps off and check it and if it's not straight we're gonna bend the hell out of it so you can watch me well okay yeah sure but some time is fun
lot of clamps. If I don't scratch my paint. Seems a lot stiffer. You know what I mean? Moment of truth. I think that's I think that's much better. I think it's straightened it, it out. Or maybe it didn't. I don't know. It's better. Son of a. Yeah. Pick that up later. It's better, but it still has a bow in it. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that. And realistically, That little bit isn't going to kill anything, but at least it's not, you know, quarter of an inch. So I'm going to pick that crap up. See you in a minute. Okay, back again. Quarter power set up. I'm going to, you know, try to quarter power it. All right now it says 1.1 1. 1 because I got a little pressure on it. You can't see anything. Oh, well, anyway. Oh, just do it like that. Hey, you want to know what we're doing? We're jacking the car up. Oh. Tell you what. Okay, we're jacked it up. And I'm going to bounce on it a little bit. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna relieve this here pressure. Point two, so we moved a little. No point to it. Okay, it says point one, point one. level um, I'm just checking my gap checking my gap no no come on now yeah it's magnetized Oh, look at that. We got a bow in it now, boys and girls. 
Go figure. Well, that little, uh, little angle, digital angle meter was a little deceiving because, you know, it doesn't stretch the whole thing. But if you watch right here, and yeah, I still have this in here, but this, well, it's no tension, but maybe it was just enough. Just a little bit, you know, and that slight bow really doesn't bother me because this has a slight bow to it. So and it's easier to fix. All it takes is a bit of a hammer. So that's where we are on that. Slight bow this way, not this way. So, see you in a bit. Adio, everybody. Well, uh, got that uh, little brace in the back right there. And uh, couldn't help myself. I put a little piece of 2x4 on it and hit it with the hammer a little bit and got her nice and flat. So in saying that, I uh, started looking around and checking things out. And if you remember way back when, I had for tire a Mickey Thompson, Mickey Thompson Sportsman Pro uh, underneath there, which was a 33 by 22, 5, 15. Okay. They don't make them anymore. I couldn't get new ones. I built this car, this back here, around that tire, around those clearances. Um, Hoosier has a 33 by 22, 5, 15 tire as well. Not a problem. Went with that. Don't mind that. Uh, clearances might be a little bit different. And when I say that, the back of the tire, I have one inch of clearance. Now, when I do a burnout, that tire is going to grow, and I don't know how much. I've talked to Jeg so far. He's kind of, hmm, I don't know, uh, but we can't find any information. So I have an inch and five eighths in the front here. Why it ended up that way, I don't know. But you know, I've done a lot of work putting those tubs in. And it's going to be a, a lot of work taking them back out. Um... So, this whole project here is on hold, the time being. Also, if you notice up here, that gap between that bar, I don't like that. And I was wondering if I could just pick it up. No, not a, it couldn't, it wouldn't budge. I cut it loose on the top, took the screws out of it, and that thing is rock solid. Okay, I was going to have to deal with that, but then started measuring some more because it's been in the back of my mind if I had enough clearance. So, before I go any farther, we're halting. I'm going to find out from Hoosier how much that tire grows and if it, I'm, I'm going to have to put in new tubs. 
So, see you probably on the next video, tearing out tubs. <laughs> Hopefully not.